the Earth is experiencing an enormous increase in volcanic eruptions in just the past few months. And we also said that the numbers of earthquakes registering six or above on the scale has also risen dramatically at the same time. We also mentioned that those individuals living along the West Coast, and specifically in the region of the Pacific Northwest, should be preparing for a mega quake, followed by a massive tsunami of catastrophic proportions, as well as the probability of violent volcanic eruptions in their neighborhood. Now, we mention these scenarios not because we think it is going to happen or we believe it is going to happen, but because we are being warned by both seismologists and volcanologists that it is going to happen, just as it did occur 315 years ago in the year 1700. Now, it may be easy to dismiss this as just a coincidence in the timing of events, except for the realization that the events we are seeing unfold in this region, and for that matter across the globe, are getting progressively worse. And we have presented the scientific charts to you in our previous videos that argue this point, that the Earth is getting extremely unstable. Of course, it is just as easy to imagine a host of reasons why this is happening. We can say it's a natural occurrence. The Earth is going through a cycle of events. Or the sun is to blame for the increase in activity, which is exactly what agencies such as NASA and the USGS would want you to believe. But the evidence is suggesting that something more complex is causing these dramatic Earth changes. And that's something we believe is a rogue system of planetary bodies that have entered into our own solar system and are presently creating havoc here on Earth. But if you have been paying attention to what is developing in the solar system, it is not only planet Earth that is being affected by the presence of these mysterious objects, it is virtually all of the planets in our solar system that are being affected in some manner or another. In fact, in this installment of the weatherspace.com video edition, developments on Jupiter has transformed the appearance of the solar system's largest planet. One of the main, two main cloud belts on Jupiter has completely disappeared. Now we're not talking about fading here, folks. It has completely disappeared. Take a look at these two pictures. They say it's a big event, but they're monitoring the system very closely, and they do not fully yet understand what is going on. Of course not. We don't know what's going on. We haven't lived for millions of years to see all this stuff that goes on with the planet. Something might be going on with the solar system that we don't know about. This picture shows before, August 4th, 2009. You see the belt, and then take a look at after, on May 8th, 2010. Look at that. The belt has completely disappeared. Now, what would trigger something that disappeared? In my opinion, it will probably be something to do with the weather patterns, probably the upper atmosphere messing around with the planet's uh, clouds. But guess what? Now, that doesn't stop right there. If it affects Jupiter, can it be a global event? They always say the sun controls the weather, so we might be looking at some kind of an event where maybe the Earth patterns might just change. The upper level pattern in the Earth just might change our climate over the next, oh, maybe 20 years or so. But this is happening so fast. Before, in 2009, Jupiter had a belt. After that, now in 2010, it doesn't. Let's keep an eye on our own planet. In fact, if you've been observant, you will have noticed that our neighbor planets of Venus, Jupiter, and Mars have been increasingly luminant. In other words, they've been much brighter in the night sky. Certainly much brighter than what I can recall as a young boy who was so fascinated in the stars and the planets. What other than another presence in our solar system, whether it be some sort of dwarf planet, a failed star, or a binary companion to our sun, that could cause these changes that are occurring not only in our solar system, but here on planet Earth. So, are governments across the world aware of its presence? Do they know exactly what is happening to our planet? 
And are they making preparations for what they expect or anticipate will take place? Have you heard about the program called Cascadia Rising? You probably haven't heard of this if you're one of those individuals who just relies on mainstream media for your news. But then again, you're, you're probably not going to hear much about this from the cable news networks because it isn't in their best interest to let you know. Cascadia Rising is a large-scale disaster preparedness exercise that will be conducted by the government agency FEMA starting next week between June 7th and the 10th in the Pacific Northwest. So, of course, the question arises as to why an exercise of such significance is about to take place by a federal agency. Certainly an exercise that's going to be very expensive and time-consuming. Why conduct this if that particular agency wasn't concerned or even knew that something catastrophic or life-threatening was about to happen? Now, we are being told, according to the report, that this preparedness exercise will be conducted in such a way as to simulate a 9.0 magnitude quake along the Cascadia subduction zone, which quake would be followed by a tsunami that would create waves more than 50 feet in height. Okay, so think about that. 50 feet, that's approximately the height of a five-story building, which by any means would be absolutely devastating to any type of structure or edifice which stands in its way. The drill will bring together local and state emergency responders, FEMA, and a number of military organizations and government first responders. The drill comes as a number of top scientists are warning the Cascadia subduction zone is a disaster waiting to happen. While most people have heard of the San Andreas fault line in California, very little attention has been given to the Cascadia subduction zone. But when compared to the San Andreas, the Cascadia subduction zone is a much larger uh, threat and a more scarier threat than is the San Andreas Fault. The Cascadia Rising Preparedness Drill will test plans that have been put together over the last couple of years. Plans that expects in the neighborhood, if not more than, 14,000 deaths, 30,000 injuries, and the complete devastation of the Pacific Northwest Coast. According to planners, the quake could devastate the region for decades and could displace a million people from Northern California to Southern Canada. So, how bad could it get? Well, over 7 million people throughout the region could be affected by the Cascadia subduction zone. When the quake hits, the force is expected to cause liquefaction across large areas of the porous region. And in areas that aren't liquefied, the force of the quake could cause huge landslides, devastating destruction to thousands of bridges and buildings, and could cause as many as 30,000 avalanches in Seattle alone. Now, the following model, which we're going to show to you here in just a second, was created by the NWS Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, also referred to as PTWC. It's based off of modeling from an earthquake that hit the area on January the 27th of the year 1700, approximately 315 years ago, which caused a massive tsunami that actually struck the coast of Japan. So traveled for thousands of miles across the Pacific Ocean. Now officials are planning for a disaster unlike anything we've ever seen. The response will include the deployment of civilian
significance of uh, conducting the exercise now as opposed to, let's say, last year or the year before or five years ago or, for that matter, two years from now? What is so important about this date? What is it that they seem to know that the rest of us aren't aware of or aren't being told about? Is it possible that they are preparing for what is coming our way from the dark regions of space? I first heard of Planet X in 2001 shortly after the 9-11 incident when a lot of people were searching the internet to see if there was some sort of correlation between the terrorist attack on the World Trade Center and the prophecies of Nostradamus. It was during this time frame that millions of people were also searching Google to learn what they could about these mysterious rogue planets that could wreak havoc on the other planets in our solar system. Now the likelihood of such an event occurring in our lifetime had for a long time been considered nothing more than a wild conspiracy theory. But now people were actually becoming genuinely concerned about its existence and about what effect it would have on our planet. In 2009, I interviewed uh, a gentleman, J. R. Moore, who has a, a national radio show. In the interview, he indicated that he had spoken with some retired naval brass who were moving to the Ozarks for safety. So you say, why the Ozarks? Well, for one thing, the region is more than 1,000 feet above sea level, and thus it would be a safe location from rising waters, which is something that is expected to occur if we have a flyby of the Planet X system. Now, that interview was published um, on our YouTube playlist, and it's published under the title Nibiru Truth and the Global Warming Cover-Up. And I would encourage you to, to listen to it in its entirety, as it does tell us a very interesting story of what preparations the government is making or has made to get ready for the passage of the Planet X system. X system. Now Russia believes that this system exists and they are presently building shelters in Moscow and throughout the country in preparation for its flyby. In the United States preparations have been underway for many years in anticipation of the passage of the Planet X system. One of these massive underground facilities is believed to be located beneath the Denver International Airport but it is off-limits to both the public and the media as a top-secret facility. There has also been considerable controversy revolving around the deaths or the mysterious disappearances of individuals in the scientific community who have become whistleblowers with regard to Planet X or a dwarf star in our solar system. Some of you may already know the story behind Dr. Robert Harrington, the chief astronomer of the U.S. Naval Observatory, who, di who died before he could publicize the fact that Planet X is approaching our solar system. Many feel his death is part of a cover-up, one in which government agencies quickly moved to conceal the most earth-shaking discovery in history. So we are certain that the studies that Harrington was conducting in his quest to locate Planet X are very real. But whether he actually died from cancer or was silenced by the elite is still a question worth investigating today. Now on the flip side of the coin, two reports were recently published by a new site called someonesbones.com. One of those reports states that in 2010, an ominous YouTube video posted by a user calling himself Nibiru Shock provided the world with the first substantiated images of the Nibiru system. These images, which are being shown here now, 
were reportedly substantiated by Marshall Masters, who is a former science features editor for CNN News and who is now a Planet X researcher who has a website which is yowusa.com. That's Y-O-W-U-S-A.com. The uh, persona known as Nibiru Shock was reportedly proven to be Professor Ronald Jason Patrick, a scientist who worked at the Australian Astronomical Observatory, who apparently died in an airplane crash earlier this year. Now the other report, and the one which has sparked a firestorm across astronomical and conspiracy theory internet communities, is the one that involves an individual named Dr. Ronald Shimschuk. Now, I have to admit that I have never heard of this individual, and very little is actually known about him, other than what is being reported on, on various alternative news sites. Now, he reportedly is an MIT graduate. His Credentials include seven years at McDonnell Douglas, four years employment at Boeing, and three at NASA. He also was employed as an astronomical consultant at the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico. Now, according to the alleged interview that was conducted with Dr. Shimschuk, he stated that the Nibiru system is very real that it is essentially a solar system of its own which will intersect with our solar system. Now at its heart is a brown dwarf star approximately one-eighth the size of our Sun. The brown dwarf is orbited by seven planets or moons, some smaller than our moon and some larger than Earth. Of greatest concern is the third planet of this system which is several times Earth's mass with a nickel-iron core. It is predicted that this planet will pass within 0 0.3 AU of Earth, or roughly within 27 million miles of our planet. Now, a follow-up interview with this astrophysicist was supposed to take place with a uh, YouTube personality, Steve Olson, but Dr. Shimchuk somehow mysteriously disappeared shortly into that interview. Now, we have been able to locate a website that has recently appeared on the internet that details who this individual is and contains a validated photograph of Nibiru, which is said to be the first substantiated image taken in the Northern Hemisphere which uh, we are showing to you here now. It is important to note that I'm, I'm using the term reportedly in referring to these articles because they can't be substantiated. 